I think it's safe to say that most beginner to intermediate players have struggled with timing issues at some point in their development. And many players actually carry those into their more advanced playing and it shows up in various ways here and there. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the common misconceptions about bad timing, the things that people blame for their timing issues, and what I think is actually the root cause of 99% of those issues. Also, stick around later in the video, I'm going to show you how you can actively work on and fix timing issues in your playing so they don't happen anymore. Let's check it out. When it comes to timing issues, players often blame one or both of their hands. For example, a lot of players will say, well, my left hand can't keep up with my right hand, so it's a left hand timing issue. On the other hand, some people blame their picking hand and say that the right hand can't keep up with the left hand. And although one of those might be true, it's not so much a timing issue in that regard as it is a technique development issue. What probably really has to happen is you need to spend more time at the level that you can play cleanly and comfortably until you're actually ready to play at those tempos where timing issues will disappear. See, most players blame a sloppy issue or a timing issue to either the left or the right hand not working. When in fact, really the issue is you're not ready to play that lick at the tempo that you're attempting it at. It's as simple as that. If you're not ready, you'll know because you won't be able to do it cleanly. So in that case, the timing issue is not really left hand or right hand. It might be something else. If you think about it, timing is not a function of left or right hand. Your hands are not bosses of their own. They have a boss, and that boss is your brain. So timing issues for, I would say, 99% of the time are stemming from your inner sense of timing being off. Let me explain. If you're not able to adequately count or feel rhythmic subdivisions like quarter notes, eighth notes, eighth note triplets, sixteens, and so on and so forth, then you're not going to be able to express them with your hands. Now a lot of players think they know what those subdivisions feel like, but are you dead on? Because if you're not internalizing those rhythms as you play, if you're not hearing them before your hand touches the instrument, there's no way your hands can follow that because there's nothing to follow. So let's take a look at whether this is going to be an issue for you, and if so, what you can do to fix it. To test whether your rhythmic subdivisions are in fact tight and dead on, forget the guitar at first. Take away the left and the right hand issue that you think is the problem, and let's test to see how well your internal rhythm is by not playing a note, we're going to clap. Let's check this out. When we clap, we are expressing rhythms from an internal point of view as opposed to worrying about what our hands are doing. So let's, let's try this with quarter notes. A quarter note at this tempo that I've got set on the metronome, quarter notes are notes that land directly on the beat. Now, you might have noticed that you could barely hear the click, and it's not because I'm clapping very hard, it's because my timing is such that it's, if it's dead on, you're not really going to hear the metronome click very much. So quarter notes are counted one, two, three, four. Not just before the beat, not a hair after the beat, you don't want to hear it like a flam, right? So in drum speak, a flam would be, right? Where this is the, the metronome and this is your hand actually trying to play the quarter note. We're trying to avoid that. If you're doing that, your inner sense of timing is not finely tuned yet. So we need to work on that. Quarter notes might seem like the simplest thing to do, but Believe me, when you try it, you may find that they're actually the toughest subdivision to, to master. Keep in mind though, don't shy away from it because quarter notes are your foundation. 
And if you're trying to build a building, a high rise, you need a super solid foundation. Of course, the analogy there is referring to if you want to play licks that are faster and more complex and in time, that's kind of like building a, a high rise. Now your foundation to do that without it toppling over or turning into a, you know, cacophonous mush <laughs> is that you need solid timing at the base level. So work on your quarter notes to double check to make sure that your inner sense of timing is actually dead on. Let's take a look at the next subdivision, eighth notes. Again, at this tempo, eighth notes are gonna be two notes per beat. And one way to express them without the guitar is just to learn how to count them. One and two and three and four and. That seems simple enough. You have a note right on the click and you have a note dead set in between your numbers. One and two and three and four and, and that's eighth notes. Let's move on to triplets. For triplets, the best way to count this is to include the number of the beat that you're playing. Think back to where we did quarter notes. What did we say? We said one, two, three, four. When we did eighth notes, it was one and two and three and four and. When you do triplets, I would advise to you for you to keep that number involved in the counting of it. A lot of players will go triple lit, triple lit, triple lit, triple lit. And that's fine. That is what a triplet sounds like. The reason why I would stress to do it the other way is when you say triple lit, triple lit, you don't know what actual beat you're on because no number is involved. Ideally, you want to be cognizant of what beat you're on. So when you say one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, then you know exactly what beat you are expressing. So that's how we're going to do triplets. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Last subdivision we're going to look at today is sixteenth notes. Now there are other triplet based rhythms and there are thirty second note rhythms and all that. We're going to stop at sixteenth notes today just for simplicity and length of video. <laughs> So here we are dealing with four notes per beat, and the best way to express that vocally, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and okay? So if you can do these four rhythmic subdivisions dead on accurate, vocally, expressing it just from you and your inner ear, and also tapping it, maybe on your leg or whatever, the point is away from the guitar. If you can do these accurately, then you stand a much better chance of actually playing those rhythms on the guitar. Now, most songs do not involve straight eighth notes or sixteens or any of that. It's usually a combination of those. And due to the fact that combinations can get a little more intricate uh, and more involved than any one of those rhythmic subdivisions on their own, you're going to want those rhythmic subdivisions on their own to be solid or else your ability to combine them is not going to really happen. So fundamental stuff, but I'm telling you that if this is weak in any level here, this is the root cause of your issues on the fretboard. This is the root cause of probably something you're blaming your left hand on or your right hand on. Now, there are other possibilities. It, like I said before, it might be you haven't developed enough technique with the fretting hand or the picking hand individually. That is possible. But 99% of rhythmic issues seem to come from the internal. It, they seem to come from your inner understanding of it. A recommendation for practicing this would be to go through these different rhythmic subdivisions, but record yourself as you do it. Now, you can do it here like a video or you can just record yourself on a voice memo on your phone but go through them record them listen back and really be really be critical of how well you actually did and you might be very surprised by what you hear in most cases most people are surprised in the negative <laughs> and they're they're like oh my goodness did I really sound that bad and that out of time but if that's what's happening then that's the issue. Uh, don't run from it, run towards it, 
and fix it and I guarantee that your fretboard issues playing wise will improve greatly due to that. Check it out.